In the previous video, you might have noticed this, that one of the NPCs was able to give us a diamond. In this video, we're going to make the NPCs do things, such as give you items. To accomplish this, we're actually going to create our own tiny scripting language to do this. Here's how it works. Every command that you want to run will have an exclamation mark in front of it. That'll tell the NPC that that's not a line of dialogue, but that's a command you want it to run. The next word is going to be what you want it to run. So for example, the go to command will jump to a line of dialogue in your file. Anything after the command will be arguments that you pass into it. So for example, 20 will be uh, the line that you want to jump to. So you're telling the NPC, hey, go to line 20 of the dialog file. Some arguments don't take any commands in at all, uh, such as the end command, right? We're just ending the dialog. The go to command takes in a line of dialog that you want to jump to, and something like the random command will take in any number of lines that you want to randomly jump to. This will allow your NPCs to have all sorts of like different conversations that you possibly could have with them. In this video, we're going to add the following commands. We're going to add a go to, an end command, a give command, and also a random command. Let's get started. The source code for this video is included in the description below, including the source code from the previous video if you want to follow along. Let's go ahead and jump into content and we're gonna to go to NPCs, and we're gonna create a new NPC called nancy.npc. Nancy's first line of dialogue is going to say here, have a diamond. And then the next thing, we're gonna run the give command. So take a look at this for a second. We're using an exclamation mark to tell Python that this is a command. The next word is going to be uh, the command that you wanna run. And then anything after it is arguments that you want to pass to the command. Um, they don't have to be numbers, but in this case, they're going to be numbers. The reason why, so this is the item ID, like which item you want to uh, give to the player. And then uh, this is the quantity of that item. This correlates, if you go to source, uh, data, and item types, uh, this correlates with this list here that we did previously in the inventory uh, video. Zero, for example, is the diamond. One would be the axe, two would be the pickaxe. So it correlates uh, with this number right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll jump into uh, source, components, UI, and then dialog view. And the key to this video is this method right here, the command method. This is where um, we actually already are checking for if there's an exclamation mark from the previous video. So let's jump into the command method and we'll go from there. First, we're going to get all of the words um, in an array. What this does is it breaks up this entire line here into a bunch of words. So it said, this is the first thing, this is the second thing, this is the third thing. Like you'll get a list of all of these different words. Next, to get the specific command you want to run, we're just going to get the second word. Again, if we come in here, the second word here is the command. We're then going to get any arguments after it. Again, splitting the string. So we're saying the third thing and anything after it. For example, it's going to get this thing and anything after it. It's really kind of as simple as taking the command and just running an if statement and checking if it equals what we want. So the basic structure of our program is going to basically just say, hey, is it give or is it go to or is it end? Like, what is the command? Um, and then we add an else here just for error checking. So if for some reason you uh, do a typo, like if you're typing this out and you do, you know, an A or something after that, um, it's going to say, oh, I don't know what's going on. And it's going to print it to the console so that you actually uh, know what's going on. I'll put this back here. So we'll do that. Let's go ahead and code our give command first. We're going to get the player's inventory and we're also going to get all of the item types. Next, we're going to get the specific type that we want. So um, we're converting this number to an integer um, arguments zero. So for example, the, like in our arguments array, which is these things, we're going to get the first thing here. So, and then it'll just look up the item types and then return T. Next, we'll get the amount that we want to use. So this is the second number here. 
In our previous video, we coded an inventory and we're just gonna call the add method on it, passing in the type of item that we wanna do, and then also the amount. It's going to return any excess that it wasn't able to add to the inventory. It's possible that the player's inventory is full um, or that you're trying to add 50 of an item to the inventory and you're able only able to do 20 or something. So the excess would be 30. To get what was actually added to the inventory, we just do amount minus excess. And then finally, if um, if we didn't add anything, like if the excess was the amount um, and you, you weren't able to add anything to the inventory, we're going to let the player know that the inventory is full. Otherwise, we're going to come in here and let the player know how much of a certain item was added to our inventory. Let's actually add Nancy to our uh, world. So let's come up here. I'm going to go to forest map, which is a starting map for me, but you might have a different one. We're going to come in here and just like we added Albert here, we're going to come in here and add Nancy as well. So Nancy is the name. Uh, the sprite that we're going to use is NPC female two, and then Nancy.npc. We're also going to, oh, there's a space there. At, this is the X position and this is the Y position of Nancy. Okay, to test it, let's go to main.py and we'll run it. I'm gonna come over here and, okay, so we've added Nancy to here. I'm gonna click here and there we go. And we receive a diamond. Let me move my head out of the way. Yeah, so up there at the top, we uh, received a diamond, perfect. And then if we do that, ooh, it crashes. So the reason why it crashed, I believe, is because there's an empty line. So let's come over here to Nancy. Yep, sure enough, there's an empty line. Because Python is actually looking for a um, like the next line to do. So this is actually good that this happened. So let's come over here and we'll jump into dialog view. And what we need to do is let's go to uh, this line right here. And uh, we'll go to next line. And what we're going to do to fix this, add the following lines of code here. What this will do is this will check to see if the line is, um, if there's nothing inside the line, like if we have a blank line, we're just gonna call the self.nextLine function. And we also don't want anything else to run in this code. So we're just gonna do return here. Um, make sure that in your MPC, let's leave a blank line here. Let's try to break it. Let's go ahead and we'll jump into main.py and we'll run it. And then let's go up to Nancy, let's talk to her. Okay, she gave us a diamond, and there we go. Perfect, we fixed that bug, excellent. Next, we're gonna code our go to and our end commands. The end command is the simplest one. We just call self.breakdown. We're just ending the dialog. This will allow us to end the dialog at any point. And so basically what it'll do is when we hit this line, it won't run any more dialog. So you now have the ability to just end your dialog whenever you want. Jumping back in here, the go to command is going to take in um, a line of some sort. So we're going to get the uh, line by passing here. The minus two is because, uh, let me show you here real quick. So say, for example, I have a go to command here and we're going to go to line one. Um, this is actually, so since this is the first uh, line, the computer, the index is actually zero. And the index of this is actually one. So uh, it says line two here in VS Code, but to the computer, this is actually the like an index of one, right? One is the second thing. Zero is the first thing. In addition to that, the next line function is also going to add one to it when it calls it. So this is why we're going to do, um, this is why in here we're going to do minus two uh, to that. And this will all work. Next, what we're going to do is, um, I just had this for debugging purposes, but you can print that. And then um, we'll come in and we'll just call self.line after it. Let's create another NPC. So we'll go into uh, our content, maps, and then NPCs. And we'll say amy.npc. Amy is just going to repeat dialogue over and over. So it's going to say this line, and it's going to say this line. And then we're going to go back to line one. So now what we're going to do is we need to add Amy to our uh, world. So let's go to forest map. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy Nancy like this. And we're just going to create another one. And instead of Nancy, we're going to say Amy. We're going to say Amy.mpc. And then the position, I want her to be at X9 and then Y1. So they'll all be just like next to each other. 
We're also going to give her a different sprite, so we'll do NPC female one. Let's jump into uh, main.py and we'll run it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk to Amy. So, okay, I can repeat dialogue. Yep, and she'll just keep talking over and over and over again because she's got that go-to that goes right back to line one. And you can actually, if you just move, it'll it'll close the dialogue. Now, I don't think you would want to do something like that in a game. That would be kind of annoying, but this will give us a lot more flexibility here in a second. Jumping back into our dialogue view, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, finish this off by adding one more command. So to add commands, I did this on purpose, find where the else is. And this is, you can go ahead and put another elif uh, command equals equals, and then we're going to do a random command. The random command is going to take in a bunch of line numbers and randomly pick one of them. Starting off, let's import the random module. Next thing, let's go ahead and get all of the lines uh, that we could potentially do. Let me show you what I mean by this. Go into content and let's go to NPCs and we'll create a new NPC called bob.npc and hit enter. Bob is going to start off by calling the random command. And these are the line numbers that he may potentially do. The first option goes to line two. So we're going to just say hello and hello, and then we're going to end the conversation. His next line of dialogue, he'll just say lovely day we're having, and then the player will say it sure is. Last thing, we're going to uh, have one last thing of dialogue. I, so basically the way this works is uh, line two will go here. Line six will be one of the options, so it'll start here. And line 10 will be doing one of the options, and it'll go here. You can actually further add more lines to this. It's not constrained. So like you could just have two and six, or you could do 10, or you could you could add more. Like you could have maybe one on line 16 or something if you wanted to. Let's jump back into our dialog view and we'll keep coding this. So we're uh, what we're getting is we're getting each one of the lines. This is called list comprehension. Basically what we're doing is for each one of the arguments, like for each one of these lines here, I'm sorry, for each one of these line numbers here, we're going to convert them to an integer and we want all of them in a list. You could have done this with an array and adding to it and such, but it's really awesome because you can just uh, do it all in one line. So essentially this is a list of all of the numbers uh, converted to integers. Next, we're going to pick a random uh, line out of those, right? Kind of like a, a raffle, right? You're putting all those numbers in the raffle and then you pick one of them out of that. And the result is that uh, one that you picked. This doesn't actually remove it from the list, but you're just saying, oh, okay, we picked two or we picked six or something. We're gonna set the current line to whatever it is. Again, minus two, as I kind of explained earlier. And then we'll just call next line and we'll, we'll go from there. Let's go ahead and add Bob to our world. So we'll jump into uh, content, maps, and then forest.map. Go ahead and create another NPC. We'll name him Bob. We'll do NPC mail2.png. And then we'll come in and we'll do um, Bob.npc. Let's also move him. So instead of, uh, we'll do 11 for the uh, X coordinate. Okay, and let's go ahead and test this. So let's jump into main.py and we'll run it. There we go. Now we have Bob here. So let's come up and talk to him. Lovely day. There we go. And then if you click him again, look at that. It's different dialogue. Now, it is possible that you might repeat the same piece of dialogue the next time that you click because it's randomly picking and it doesn't care what the previous one was. Um, but I think this suffices. With this, right, you saw that it repeated that third uh, piece of dialogue um, a second time. A challenge that I have for you is to create a take command if you want to. Um, we've done the give command. The take command is very similar. Um, in our inventory class from another video, we have an inventory.remove function, which you can call, uh, which actually takes the same arguments, right? The type that you want to remove and amount. I'm not saying change this give command, but you can create a take command as well with very, very similar code. I would challenge you to do that. We'll probably create that in another video. I really want to do a video where we have quests in our game, and I think we'll definitely need the take command. 
but try it, give it a shot and try it out. That about wraps it up for this video, so thank you so much. One other suggestion I have for you is when you're creating these NPCs, you could also just create, for example, a forest citizen NPC, um, and then just have very generic, uh, you know, dialogue for uh, any sort of NPC that's in the forest. For example, you can create a couple different NPCs, right? They can have different names, different sprites, but they could also, they could all load from the uh, forest citizen NPC file. I hope that this video is helpful for you. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.